Section 8.5 talks about these things called vectors, and we describe them by using coordinates, and we say that they have certain magnitude and direction. So these are things that we're going to have to talk about. We're going to learn how to describe them using coordinates and compass directions, and also learn how to add them and find what we call the resultant vector. So we're going to begin with some vocabulary. We've got the word vector that I mentioned to you on the previous slide, and I also talked about magnitude and direction. These are two things that are really important with vectors because the magnitude tells us the distance from the initial point, which is where it's starting, to the terminal point, which is where it's ending. So it basically tells us like the distance, the, the length of it, the size of it, the magnitude of it. The direction is just telling us which way the arrow is pointing, and usually it's described using degrees. We can also describe it using um, coordinates. So then we also have to look at how we're going to name a vector. So let's say that we have this vector here. I'm going to put my initial point. This point here where the arrow ends is my terminal point, And I'll label each of those. I'll just call them KW, for example. So then this vector would be named KW. I start at my initial point. I end at my terminal point, And then I put this little symbol above it that kind of looks like an arrow, but it's like missing part of it. I can't use the full arrow because remember that means ray, so I don't want to use that. And then our last word is resultant vector, which is the vector created when adding two other vectors. And that's what we're going to see at the end of this lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and get some practice describing a vector. Uh, what is vector OL as an ordered pair? That's our first example. Now, when you write these, it's just like writing the coordinates of a vector. However, instead of parentheses, you use these little pointy kind of parentheses with a comma in the middle. And then my coordinates, while well, I'm going x over and I'm going y down. So those would be my coordinates of this example. Let's just say that they told me that I was going over to, I don't know, 4 on my x and three and a half on my y. Then I would have four comma 3.5. And remember, we're putting them in these little pointy kind of brackets. So then how do we describe this with compass directions? With compass directions, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at my angle and I need to figure out which direction I'm going north, south, east, or west. So just a reminder in case you didn't know this north, south, east, and west. So there's your compass directions. And if you look, this is in between, my example here, is in between south and east. The angle that I have is this 50 degree angle here. So if I go east, if I'm going east, what I need to do is I need to kind of shift down. I'm spinning down by 50 degrees. So I am 50 degrees south of east, which is the direction I was originally traveling. So I was going east, but I had to kind of spin down by 50 degrees. So we can say that this is 50 degrees south of east. And then there's a you try problem for you to do. So for these problems, we're going to have to calculate what the magnitude and the direction of a vector are. And in order to do that, we're going to have to use our knowledge of trigonometry. So if you think about it, by creating our coordinates here, our x and y coordinates, we're creating a right triangle. And if I know that the length of this piece is 40 and the length of this piece is 25, then I can go ahead and I can calculate what my hypotenuse is that I don't even need to use trigonometry for. I can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say 40 squared plus 25 squared equals c squared. So I know that 40 squared is going to be 1,600, and 25 squared is 625. So if I add those things together, I get... 2,225 equals c squared. And if I take the square root, I get that c is equal to 47.1. So 
So C represents my magnitude. That's the length or the distance between my start and my end point. So I have my magnitude done. Now what I need to do is I need to take a look at my uh, direction. So I need to look at what this angle is right here. All right, so I'm gonna look at some trig now. I know all three of my sides, so I can pick whichever trig function I want. I'm just gonna go ahead and use sine. So sine of x equals opposite, so 25. And you know, I didn't specifically mention this, but the reason I'm using all of my positive values is because I'm just concerned with the length, not the direction. I'm not concerned whether I'm going up 25 or down 25, which is what that negative tells me. I'm just concerned that that's my length. So opposite over hypotenuse, and we said that our hypotenuse is 47.1. So in my calculator, I'm going to say uh, I need sine inverse of 25 divided by 47.1. And when I put that in my calculator, 47.1 I get that x is 32 degrees. Okay, so I know that this angle is 32 degrees. Now I just have to figure out like north, south, east, west, what's happening. So it's like I'm going in the westward direction, right? So I'm going in the westward direction, but I have to go a little bit south of there. I have to kind of loop down. So I am 32 degrees south of west. So that's how I'm going to explain this, 32 degrees south of west. So there's my direction, there's my magnitude, and I'm done with that problem. So you're going to go ahead and do something very similar for the U-Try problem, and I'll look at that in class. The last thing we're going to talk about is adding two vectors together. Now what's important is you can only add two vectors head to tail. So if you look at this first example, your vectors are going in opposite directions. So technically, graphically, and visually, what we have to do is we have to take this vector C, and we need to move it over to the end of vector A so it's head to tail, just like what you can see in this picture below. Now the resultant vector comes from connecting your initial point to your terminal point. Initial point of A connected to C, so now I want this resultant vector right here. So that is visually what it looks like. However, if you want to explain what that is, then you're going to use coordinates to say, okay, my vector A was negative 4, negative 3. Those were the coordinates of vector A. If you look at this picture up here, I went over 4, down 3. And vector C was originally over one, down two. If I just simply add up my negative four and my one, I'll get negative three. And if I add up my negative three and my negative two, I get negative five. Let's see if that matches up with what we ended up with as our blue resultant vector. Went over three, one, two, three, and down five. So that's exactly what happened. I went over three, down five, over three, down five. So you can do this graphically by connecting your vectors head to tail and then connecting them with this new resultant vector. Or you can just do it algebraically by adding the two vectors together, taking the x's, adding them, and then adding the y's, which is what I have right up here at the top. So there you go. There's a U-Try problem for you, and I will see you in class so we can practice this.